Dad's house tonight. Lent is often known as a time of giving something up in order to make room in our lives for spiritual pursuits. Rather than just giving up in Lent, the scriptures ask us to consider all that Jesus is up to and all that he asks us to be up to in his name. Instead of bemoaning what we can't do or used to do in a culture where measuring up to external standards seems impossible, this Lent we will celebrate the small things that we can do right now to respond to God's call in our place for our time. As we begin this Lenten season, we contemplate the essence and substance of our lives. Do we spend time researching for must-haves that our culture says we need? Or are we storing up the things that bring us closer to the reign of God, the good things, the treasures that fill us and others with the well-being of body, mind, and spirit.
And now you're invited to share the peace with those around you, uh, remembering to send your peace through the camera to those who's worship, worshiping remotely. But are we doing remotely today? Oh, you yes. are. Well, hello. <laughs> peace be with you. <laughs> peace. And we're we doing the peace. Yep. Yep. We're saying hello. Well, we greet exactly. each other. <laughs>
Put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen, not by others, but by your Abba, who is in secret, and your Abba, who sees in secret, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For there your treasure is, there your heart will also be. contemplate the substance of your life right now. Think about it. Do you spend time reaching for must-haves? Things that our culture says we need in this consumer world that we live in? Or are we Storing up the things that bring us closer to the reign of God. 
the good things, treasures, that fill us and others with well-being of body and mind and spirit. What is it that you're storing up? Our scripture reading this evening is from the section of the Gospel of Matthew, known as the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is teaching a group of people and his disciples on the side of a hill that is overlooking the Galilean Sea. And as they're up there and he's teaching them, he, he shares this scripture with them, this thought, this this new teaching. He says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, Your heart will be also. You know, these words of Jesus cut right to the heart of our intentions and our motives. Out of the heart comes our intent. Jesus says, for out of the heart come evil intentions. Murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. There needs to... Be a change of heart is what Jesus tells many of the people that have come to hear him speak. That there needs to be a a transition. Something within us needs to, to change and shift. There needs to be a change of heart. A transformation from a a heart of stone that thinks only of itself to a heart of flesh that has faith and trust in God and seeks to love its neighbor as God is love. As I look at Luke chapter 18, we see that a certain ruler asked Jesus a question. He said, Jesus, good teacher, What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. He replied, I have kept all these since my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, there is still one thing lacking. Sell all that you own and distribute the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. You see, the ruler was unable to let go of his his wealth and his Uh, and, and all of his belongings, all of the things that he had stored up in life to follow Jesus. It was too difficult. He could do everything else but this. And he could not put his trust and faith in Christ to provide for his needs. He wanted eternal life without giving up his comfort, his wealth, his, his position, his status. Remember what Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Storing up treasure in heaven is a heart and faith issue. We need to think about it. Where are we storing up our treasures? Because that's where our heart is. Is our heart on earthly things, things here? On position, on money, on wealth, on, on status? Or are we building up faith in God? Trusting God to provide for our needs. 
You know, the author of 1 Timothy puts it this way, for those who have come to know and follow Christ. He says, as for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. I think Timothy was on to something there. He was sharing the same lesson that Jesus had taught on the Sermon on the Mount. I think he was there listening in and heard that that message and got it and repeated it. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts. So I am helped and my heart exalts in my song. I give thanks to him, says the psalmist in Psalm 28. Verse 7, to truly love and to trust God is to love our neighbor. And we cannot pick and choose who our neighbor is. Amen? Amen. Our neighbor is everyone. All humankind is our neighbor. Wherever you find yourself, whether you're here in Greenfield or some other a town or some other state or some other country. That is your neighbor. And we are to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. That's the great commandment. And so to truly love and trust God is to love our neighbor. And, and our neighbor, like I said, is all of, of humankind. So we begin to store up Treasure in heaven when our hearts are fully given over to Christ. We store up heavenly treasure when we are authentic with ourselves and go deeper into the reality of what is true, loving, and of eternal value. We store up treasure when we show mercy to the poor, the outcast, the disenfranchised, the immigrant, the homeless, the orphan, the widow, the prisoner, the oppressed. We store up heavenly treasure when we speak out against racism, classism, and other injustices in our world. We store up treasure in heaven by forgiving others as we have been forgiven, loving our enemies and praying for them. This is how we store up treasure in heaven. We store up treasure in heaven when we follow the teaching of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Are you storing up treasures in heaven? Are you storing up treasures in heaven? That's my question. Have you ever asked yourself that? Where are you storing up? During our time this Lent, you know, this is, this is how we store it up. This is where uh, we have eternal value, where it won't be stolen, it won't rust, it won't be consumed. That's, heaven is where we want to store up. And we do it through good works, Timothy says. We do it by loving each other, by doing what is right in God's sight. That's storing up in heaven. And so during our time in Lent, we will focus on not giving up something, but considering what all Jesus is up to and all that he asks us to be up to in his name. We have pos- uh, passed out a packet with a Lent devotional to go along with the worship series and a pen uh, for you to use to write in the journal. And there's also a, a timer, egg timer in there. So if you weren't here Sunday and didn't get one and would like to get one, there's a pen, a journal, and a timer. We're asking you during Lent to start this 
um, but we're actually going to do it for the whole year, is take that egg timer. It's a five-minute timer and spend five minutes a day in prayer. And you, however you want to pray, you can, you know. But I'm hoping that you'll give God a chance to speak back to you in that prayer time. And if he does, you can write it in your journal. Write it down in that book. Write it down. What's God saying to you? Write your questions to God and write the answers that God gives you. But spend five minutes. We've asked you, before we were doing the breakthrough prayer, asking God to break through, and that's not a five-minute prayer. That's just a quick, little, easy prayer. But I'm asking you to go a little further, to take five minutes. And you don't have to use the egg timer. That's just something to remind you to pray. You can set it on your watch. You can set it on your phone. You can set it on your, your oven uh, timer if you want. I don't care. Whatever timer you, you want to use is fine. And you might find that, you know, five minutes is good, but I can go a little longer. And that's good, too. You know, if you can go 10 minutes, 15, 20, do it, you know. This is just a way to get you started in prayer if you don't know where you have a prayer routine going. And so there's a packet out on the tables as you leave tonight. If you did not get one, grab one. Uh, the, um, the journals start tonight. Uh, with um, uh, Ash Wednesday. So um, pick one up if you don't have one. This season of Lent, we are using the image of a hot air balloon for the, this worship series, What Are You Up To? And it kind of comes from the image of, if you've ever seen the movie Up, it's about the Boy Scout going to the, the old man's house and his wife has passed away and he's trying to figure out life after that and he's got all these balloons tied to his house and he, all this change is happening around him so he's going to take these balloons and lift his house up and travel and move it and he gets an unexpected um, traveler with him cute movie but it has a lot of balloons so that's where we get the, the, the hot air balloon what are you up to so just like being on the ground it makes it difficult to see the bigger picture and sometimes our lives and faith need to be seen from a distance. We need to have a different perspective. And so this idea that we move ourselves far enough to see with a bird's eye, God's eye view, is important to see how small we are and how big God actually is. And God's kingdom is around us and in us. And so God wants a broken heart. God desires private prayer, where we go inside to the inner room of our own hearts and allow the Holy Spirit to teach us all truth. And I believe that God longs for these things for us, because God wants us to be whole and not broken. God desires for us to do the things that restore us rather than keep the holes with us wide open, you know, to be filled with things that never satisfy. And so God hopes for us to delight in the abundance that is right for us rather than live lives pointlessly striving for the things that truly never satisfy or last. For the things that never last might be as well be the same as the ashes, you know, that we apply to our foreheads as we begin Lent. So let us store up things in heaven that have eternal value and let us do that this Lent as we look at what Jesus is up to. And wants us to be up to with him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, the imposition of ashes on Ash Wednesday is a Christian tradition implemented in the 11th century. When Ash Wednesday was added to the liturgical calendar. The reference to ashes 
was added to the liturgical calendar as part of penitence. And it was connected with wearing sackcloth, as in the book of Daniel. And in those early days of marking Ash Wednesday, those who had been ousted from the church were given sackcloth and ashes to wear during that 40 days. And at that, of course, we don't do that anymore. We don't expel people from the church. But these people would have to wear the sackcloth and the ashes for 40 days, and then on Thursday, Monday, Thursday, they would come back into the fold, into the congregation, and receive the meal with everyone else. And so, we don't believe in ousting people from the church. We are all in the need of reconnecting in divine love. And our church is a place where mercy is the order of every day, right? We all deserve mercy and want mercy. And so we should be merciful. But on Ash Wednesday, we remember that we are not mythical gods. We are not perfect and we will not live forever. This year we commit to making the most out of our one precious life of or by being up to something good. Rather than give something up as penitence this year, we are focusing on the little things that lift up the lives um, of others in our own lives. And so, like the incense the psalmist writes about in Psalm 141, even the smallest actions of our lives can elevate us all to a higher plane of love and mercy and justice. And these then are the treasures that we must store up. So let our ashes this day remind us of how precious is our time together on this earth with one another. You are invited to come down the center aisle to receive the imposition of the ashes and return Um, to your seats by the same way like we do communion. Just come down the center aisle and go back to your seats on these outer aisles right here. And as we do that, um, Devin, you'll play. Would you like to receive ashes first before you afterwards? Okay. As people are coming forward, there's a song, a hymn that we'll sing. um, Just as I am. And so as you go back, as you come forward, go back to your seats, uh, just begin singing that as we meditate on that song and um, people receive the ashes. So if you're ready, if you want to receive the imposition of ashes, you may come forward at this time. If you want to start in the front and work our way back.
author of the cosmos. Our view of this world is so limited, but you create and see and know all things. May your life practices be used in ways that reverberate to the edges of possibility. Treasures in heaven multiplied on earth through your love. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Now, if you're able to, please stand as we sing our closing hymn. <clears throat> and lifted up. May this season be one of soaring with the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ and in the love and mercy of the Creator. When someone asks you, what are you up to? You can respond, with God's help, I'm up to something good. Amen. Let the people say, Amen. Amen.